Hey, welcome back. Time for another episode of WVU Radio Today, Marketing Communications Today. Coming to you live from the campus of West Virginia University. It's a syndicated show that sits squarely at the intersection of data-driven decision-making and modern marketing practices. With the magician herself back again, Cindy Greenglass. Hey, Cindy. Hey, how have you been? Well, I'm embarrassed this morning. I'm deeply embarrassed because you were kind enough to send me a WVU cap and a really, really cool windbreaker. And I ran out of the house and I grabbed the wrong cap this this morning, wearing a different college uh, cap. I rotate. Everybody laughs. They see me on a different college (laughs) cap every week. Every time I wear that WVU cap here in Southern California, people stop me like crazy. Who knew there were so many alum all over the place here? Us mountaineers, we are everywhere. Uh, next time, we'll make sure we get you in the in the cap next time, and then I can post it. Okay. But it's a pleasure having you back. Well, a pleasure having you back after a rotating series of hosts here on this show. And today, today the rebellion begins. It's marketing rebellion. That's what you're talking about here today. That sounds a little revolutionary. It is. It is. I'm thrilled that we have Mark Schaefer with us as our guest. He's a globally recognized author, a speaker, a podcaster. He could do a far better job than I can and arguably one of the most important bloggers. He has uh, listed as one of the top five marketing blogs in the world. He teaches graduate marketing classes at Rutgers. He's written eight best-selling books. And his new book is, in fact, called Marketing Rebellion, The Most Human Company Wins. It's an amazing and essential new view of business and a manifesto for human-centered marketing. It hit number one in both the marketing and advertising categories of Amazon. He has a global who's who client base, including Pfizer, Cisco, Dell, Adidas, even the U.S. Air Force. To name a few, he's a very prestigious keynote speaker and, in fact, will be joining us at Integrate at uh, West Virginia University this summer, our our marquee Integrate conference. So uh, without further ado, um, I would like to welcome in Mark uh, to our show today. Hi, Mark. Happy to say I'm wearing my WVU cap in Knoxville, Tennessee today. Awesome. And I didn't say Mark is also a proud alum of WV, correct? 1982. There you go. So we are everywhere, aren't we? (laughs) So let's jump right in. There's so much we want to talk to you about today, Mark. And I want to start with this new book, the idea of becoming the most human company. And I'd like to ask you, what does this mean? And, And what brands do you think are actually achieving this? and succeeding in being a human, most human company. As you mentioned, I've written eight books, and I never have a plan to write a book. I write a book when I get curious about something and when I see a problem that I don't understand. And this time, as I go around the world and I speak and consult, I was hearing the same things from companies, you know, large companies, CMOs and small companies, They kept telling me they felt stuck, that their marketing wasn't working like it used to, and they were falling behind. And as I got into it and did some research about this, my first hypothesis, well, you know, technology is moving so fast, people are feeling overwhelmed. When I got into it, I found that, yes, that's part of it, the technology has moved ahead, but the consumers have moved ahead of us too, these always-on hyper-enabled consumers have different expectations of companies today. They just don't take to the traditional advertising and public relations like they used to. They have different expectations, and that's sort of the theme of the book. Today, the customers are in control. The customers are the marketers, and the most human company will win. Uh, The customers in the driver's seat today, that's for sure. I think most of us have felt that in our businesses that they're driving the bus and uh, we have to meet the customers where they are, uh, when they want, in the channel they want us to meet them in. You had asked me about the companies that were succeeding. I'm sorry, I, yes. I, I skipped that part. I was too enthused on my first answer. You know, one of the things I think is very energizing about the way the market is today is that I think that small businesses are ideally positioned 
to win in this environment mm-hmm. because so often the personal brand is the brand today in a lot of cases and it's hard to really know who you know somebody at Ford Motor Company or at Verizon but we know the people at our local businesses and great branding is about building this emotional connection between you and your customer in some way and today a lot of the times that emotional connection is occurring with a person and so i'm very energized by the idea that i think small businesses are ideally suited to win in this environment Ah, very interesting. Usually it's kind of the David and Goliath, right? So the smaller companies might have an advantage in this environment. And the larger companies may need to think about how they get back to the kitchen table, get back to the one-on-one and and maybe not rely as heavily on technology. How do you feel about AI and technological trends And are they inhibitors or are they helping us as marketers? Well, it can be both. Technology has become the enemy of great marketing in many ways. And it's not because technology is bad. It's because it's so good. It's so fun. It's so inexpensive. We can just get all these email lists and just spam people. And it's made us lazy marketers. Today, I remember when I took my first class at WVU in marketing. That's where I really fell in love with marketing. And I opened up Principles of Marketing by Dr. Philip Kotler, my Mm -hmm. first textbook. And he said, marketing is a combination of psychology, sociology, and anthropology. Marketing is all things human. But we don't really think about it that way anymore. We think about our MarTech stack and robocalls and all this technology that we use to abuse people, and we've got to get better. I think a lot of the big companies of the past built their brands through technology and through advertising, and we just don't see that advertising anymore. We watch TV on Netflix and on Amazon Prime. We don't see ads. We listen to the radio all day long on Spotify, or we listen to audiobooks, no advertising. We have 650 million devices in the world that have ad blockers on them. It's the largest civil rebellion in the history of the world. So we've got to find another way to connect to these people, this increasingly unreachable customer. Do you see that this is going to continue? People are going to disengage. They're going to be turning off and turning away from technology. And do you think it's going to regress back where they're saying the local grocery store, the, the local merchant, the small business, I want to I wanna go back to the face-to-face, I want to turn off all my devices, and uh, we're going to see that trend completely change? I don't think it'll completely change. I think technology is a big part of our lives and it always will be. And there are lots of ways to use technology in ways to make us more human instead of creating barriers between us and our customers. We can reduce barriers between us and our customers. But I think the main idea is that customers today, they want to be respected. We see this happening in so many places today. They want their time to be respected. They want their life to be respected. They want their privacy to be respected. And what's happening is companies have not respected customers They haven't respected their privacy, so now it's being regulated, right? We're going to have new laws because the companies can't self-monitor themselves, and so unfortunately it's going to be done for them. So if we can use technology in a way to connect in more human ways and respect our customers, we'll be okay. There's definitely a trend toward localism, toward buying local, toward connecting local, and that again sort of provides an advantage to local businesses, small businesses. And I asked a researcher as I was working on my book, she was researching this sort of local, this, she called it localism. A digital strategy. And I asked her, I said, well, how will big companies adjust to this trend? And she said, I don't know. So there definitely is a trend, maybe not so much against technology, but definitely more connecting more on a local level with businesses. 
Yes, I agree with you there. I saw that a lot when I travel in Europe, that they have very much gone to the back to supporting the local business and feeling engaged in their community and local environment and getting away from the large multinationals or even national organizations and the anonymous feeling that you get and wanting to be with people who respect you and treat you as a customer. And I appreciate that point of view. That's great. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break in a minute or two here. But what I'd like to ask you to think about for when we come back is you mentioned that the traditional roles of marketing are changing. And for some, like the traditional CMO, for example, that they may be completely ideas of the past. We need to reinvent or rethink about the corporate structure of marketing, the agency management structure. I'd like to hear your point of view on this in a little more detail. And is there a way that companies should start thinking of adapting and adopting new thoughts of leadership and new titles as this trend takes place? So if I can have you think about that for a minute while I turn it back over to Paul, who's going to talk a little bit more about WVU for a minute. And indeed I am. For those of you who are looking for some new thoughts or a new place to uh, restart or rethink or reprogram the way you've uh, approached uh, marketing, there is a place, there is a space, West Virginia University's online data marketing communications program, first graduate program of its kind in the country focuses on strategic thinking, critical problem solving, and informed decision making. Data Marketing Communications Program prepares you for your career by learning the innovative tactics you'll need to survive and thrive these days from award-winning faculty like those presented here today. Learn more. There's just nine little letters. You know it by now. dmc.wvu.edu. E-D-U, that's West Virginia University's Data Marketing Communications. Okay, can I ask one little quick question before he answers your question there? And I'm just thinking as, as we're talking about the topic here today, can companies even stay human when more and more of the customer interaction is dealt with robocalls and robots and bots and uh, AI and all this stuff? Are we removing the humans from the whole equation? Oh, that's such an interesting question. And a lot of the research today shows that consumers generally accept bots. And the reason is often the bots are more human than the humans. (laughs) So, So, I mean, how many of us have had really terrible, terrible customer service experiences? So if you have a bot, that's just one slot above terrible, it's an improvement. (laughs) Well, interesting to take on the whole thing. You know, so many times the the bots are more sympathetic and empathetic and helpful than the other person that uh, seems like they're having a bad day and just wants to get off the call here. Yeah, and I think the bots will be becoming more sophisticated. I think it'll even get to a point where where they will become entertaining. Hmm. And there'll be certain bots that will be our favorites and we'll tell our friends about and this will be a whole new sort of marketing tool because we don't really like spending time on uh, you know on the phone with a customer service person but it might be interesting chatting online at Nike with a Michael Jordan bot or <laughs> wow. you know uh, with a Dolly Parton bot or right. something like that that might be fun and then all the while the companies can be collecting information about it so uh, i think we're just at the cusp of some very interesting days in terms of, of bots. Well, to give you an example that Cindy actually couldn't make it today. This is the Cindy Greenglass bot that oh, we're talking cool. with here today. So. <laughs> Would have never known. No, no. Would have never known. <laughs> it's very funny, though. I love my bitmojis, and so do all my friends, that when I send them their morning bitmojis, and uh, we have conversations with our colleagues about the voice assistants and whose voice are you using, and what did I hear? Samuel L. Jackson is now going to be a voice assistant voice. And so I do think it's entertaining. You're right on there. And um, they can be helpful and entertaining at the same time and welcoming. So let's go back to this question about the traditional role of marketing changing, the traditional jobs changing. Is the CMO gone for good or will it arise again as an, in a new role? And what are the titles and functions that you're seeing that companies need to look at for marketing professionals in the future? 
Well, I definitely think there's a, a lot of turmoil going on. We see a lot of big companies like Coca-Cola and Johnson & Johnson eliminating the CMO role, which has been a, a surprise to a lot of people. And I think part of the problem, part of the turmoil, is exactly the turmoil that I talk about in my book, Marketing Rebellion, is that we are moving from this era where it was easy to measure. We had familiar advertising techniques. We had relationships with advertising agencies. And all of that is starting to crumble. And the CMO is is right in the middle of that right now. And a lot of the marketing techniques where instead of we're broadcasting at people and we're trying to manipulate people, now we sort of have to come alongside them. Now that we have consumers have the accumulated knowledge of the human race in the palm of their hands, they're pretty good at making their own decisions. And so the role of marketing is changing. A lot of the tactics are going to be changing. And so the role of the CMO is really in turmoil right now as companies try to hang on to what they have and and try to figure out what's coming next. I think marketing is a very essential role in the organization. I don't think marketing will ever go away. Uh, I think the role of the marketing leader will have to be in some transition, however. And some of the things I'm hearing now, Cindy, are that that CMOs, they're focusing more on customer experience so that instead of just running programs or managing accounts, CMOs would be responsible for every single customer touch point, every single way that customer could experience our company. It's a very, very different way of thinking, and it's exciting to see. It's endlessly fascinating, and I'm very optimistic about the role of marketing and marketing leadership, but it is going to go through some tumultuous times. Yes, I um, recently was at a, um, a, a large hospital network. We were talking about some of the automation that is being put in place to facilitate appointment setting and working with a hospital on all the different parts and departments to navigate through lab and doctors, et cetera. And, and in the meeting was an individual with the title of chief access officer. And that this was the individual who has all the access points that patients have available to them in communicating with the institution, call centers, the front desk, billing, you name it. And I thought, now that was a rather interesting title. And they said this is becoming very prevalent in the healthcare industry because there's so many access points and they don't communicate with each other and it's extremely disjointed. So I thought that was an interesting title and marketing role for healthcare. Well, if you think about it, a brand used to be what a company told you it was, but today a brand is what people tell each other. So Mm -hmm. it makes sense to really look at all those touch points, just as you said, because in that hospital example, if one touch point fails, that's what they're going to talk about. That's going to become the brand. So you've got to be perfect in sort of a 360-degree view of everything the customer is experiencing because, as I said, the customers are the marketers today. If we see ads, we don't believe ads anymore, but we believe each other. We believe our friends. We believe our families. We believe business leaders. We believe technical experts, and we believe these people called influencers who really are just trusted friends that are online. A strategy being enacted by the hospital there, I think it makes a lot of sense. I want to pick up on that. We may have less trust in our institutions today than perhaps ever, and we have greater confidence and trust in the authenticity of our friends, a family, and and as you said, these influencers. So I'm a brand, and we need to figure out how a brand inserts themselves into this new environment where they are known and they are engaging in a conversation and be authentic about it when they're presenting themselves in. Is there a a secret sauce way to be authentic when you know that you're inserting yourself as a marketing or a brand that's trying to influence opinion or purchase behavior? 
Well, I think it really requires a different mindset. And I hinted at it earlier where I said a lot of the mindset of the marketing of the past is I'm broadcasting at you and I'm going to change you. And today it's more like I want to come alongside you and help you. And I think the first thing in any business is before marketing matters at all, you've got to deliver the goods, right? The hospital you talked about, they've got to do everything right. A restaurant you go to, nobody's gonna care about their marketing, nobody's gonna care about telling their story if the service was bad or they couldn't find a parking space or the bathrooms were a mess. Marketing begins with delivering the goods. And then after that, I think great marketing today is beginning to identify what is a story about you that's authentic, that's interesting, that's relevant. So I was in a restaurant the other day, and they had this story on the table about some of the historic surroundings of this building. And they had a story on the table about some of the special farms where they were getting ingredients for their food. Now, that is believable. It's authentic. It's interesting. It's something that I would want to tell my friends, and it's relevant. And so... That's not an ad, you know, that's not some public relations thing, but it's a way to get me to understand the story. So there's lots of ways today that we have to think about how do we start to enter the conversation offline? How do we start to enter the conversation online? And most important, how do we encourage other people to spread the story? One of the big buzzwords today and for the last 10 years has been content marketing. And so lots of companies are spending millions and millions of dollars creating all this content that nobody ever really sees. The economic value of content that's not seen and shared is zero. So in every aspect of marketing, it really today depends on getting customers, getting consumers to carry the story forward. That's really where marketing is today. How do we enter that two thirds? Two thirds of our marketing is occurring without us. How do we get invited to that? That's really what marketing is going to be looking like in the future. Wonderful. Well, I wish we had more time together, Mark. You have so much to share. I hope we'll continue this conversation and we will see you at Integrate later this year. You provided us great, relevant, interesting, and authentic insights, and we'll see you in West Virginia soon. Well, thanks for having me. You've been listening to WVU Marketing Communications Today, brought to you live from West Virginia University, a biweekly program that sits at the intersection of data-driven decision-making and marketing practice, only on the Funnel Radio Network, for at-work listeners like you.